The Texas Rangers, the city of Arlington, a partnership and synergy that's lasted 50 years. Bringing us moments like Kenny Rogers' perfect game. Hello, perfect game! Neftali Feliz to Benji Molina, sending the hometown team to the World Series. The Texas Rangers are American League champions! And Adrian Beltre, becoming Mr. 3000 the same day Pudge was inducted to the Hall of Fame in Cooperstown. It's America's pastime for a reason. There's something magical about baseball that no other sport can replicate. And that love starts at a young age. On a diamond like this one, kids learning the fundamentals and dreaming one day they can become the next Beltre, Pudge, Nolan, or Young. But before the Rangers legends we know and love, a different type of legend was born. A man in a suit with a can-do spirit that now runs through the DNA of this city. It's the story of a boy mayor and his quest for a field of dreams right here in Arlington. This is the journey to baseball town. The sensation then is something I'll never forget uh, because uh, it uh, reached the end of a 13 year effort to bring Major League Baseball to uh, this Dallas-Fort Worth region of ours. And so we couldn't help but be overjoyed. Michael Young is the longest tenure Ranger that we've had here. And Tom Vanderf actually went to bat for the Rangers longer than Michael Young. It was a 13 year process. It started the year I was born, actually. I was hearing about Tom Vandergriff in junior high because everybody in Grand Prairie where I grew up, and of course the city limit signs back up, cursed Tom Vandergriff because Grand Prairie was at one time bigger than Arlington, had more things going for it, boom, that all changed. And I could hear that damn Tom Vandergriff, everybody, all the kind of the city officials in Grand Prairie, but of course they all admired him for everything he was getting done. And so then you, you meet the guy, the most down to earth, humble, just, and he, he would almost, he would blush if you praised him. Tom was the mayor when I was born and I was 20 when he left office. So my entire childhood and teenage years were all spent with the father who was the mayor of Arlington. It was just, I, I thought it was his job. In fact, it really was his job. The family was involved in the car business, but my grandfather, his father ran it. And it, it, that's who he was. He was personified being the mayor. Truly, one of the happiest decisions I ever made was to offer myself uh, to work for the city of Arlington. Growing up with my dad was pretty dynamic, I would say. I mean, my dad was always working, always very busy. Uh, my mom very readily and willingly took over the role of being the primary caregiver, the one that shuttled us to school, and every once in a while my dad might take someone. But he was working nonstop, and of course he loved Arlington, he worked so hard for the city of Arlington, and uh, he was very focused on what he wanted to achieve for, for Arlington. When I was born, Arlington was a very small town. It was around 7,000 people. By the time I graduated from high school, it was closer to 70,000. But it was very small. The city was very compressed um, between the Turnpike and then the I-30, and uh, I-20 came in while I was still here, but not much between it and Arkansas Lane. You, you take Arlington, 50s, I'd, I'd say just, country town. I mean, a country town with a lot of country people. Tom Vandergriff is the boy mayor. And I always like to say this because it's part of the legacy of, of Grand Prairie, is that Grand Prairie had, you know, it had the bomber plant. It had all this stuff going for it. Arlington had nothing. Then after Tom Vandergriff takes over, it's all about Arlington. 
Still is today. As a Grand Prairie boy, I hate to say that, but still is. There's no mountain we can't climb. Arlington, that is. Being mayor, I think, was his ideal job. He had a few others, you know, politically before the end of his life, but being mayor, I think, was his favorite. He loved the little things. He loved the service, taking out somebody's trash, you know, just, um, he had a lot of funny stories of people calling him and they needed certain things. And of course, in those days, his number was in the phone book. You could just pick up the phone and call him. A lot of people irate about various things, you know, that would happen. Uh, but I think he loved that. He loved being able to help. At first, it seemed like an impossible dream. There were really a couple of reasons for, for Tom to, to look at baseball, and, and it wasn't just baseball. Uh, he tried for every major league sport that was out there. When the Cowboys, for example, in the mid-60s were looking to relocate, ultimately they did to Irving, he recruited them. And this is before we had a baseball team, remember? So he recruited them hard. Um, when hockey, he was, he was one of the first people to try to get hockey to come down here to uh, Texas. NBA basketball, anything he could think of. Tom all, even though it was a remote possibility, in the back of his mind, he was interested in the fact that someday we would have Major League Baseball. Six Flags over Texas. What really started it all was the Six Flags over Texas Park, which was an original park. It became a chain, of course, over the decades, but it was originally here, and it was part of the Great Southwest Industrial District. And so he believed this, he was an early advocate of public-private partnerships, and the fact that we could have this large industrial complex district where business was being generated, jobs were being created, coupled with entertainment that would keep people here and keep them coming, which would theoretically, and it did, and still does, a lower tax base for the citizens it would be supported by entertainment activities, people coming and spending money here, staying in hotels, eating in restaurants, and of course, large business interests wanted to be around a happening, going place. I did see how much he wanted to have Arlington grow, and in a positive way, he really did. He, he wanted to promote the economic development, and he had been to school at the University of Southern California. He saw what the area was like, and he just wanted to have that much opportunity for people at Arlington. My grandfather's journey for Major League Baseball really began uh, in 1958. 1958 is when it all started, I would say. Um, and he began riding every Major League owner uh, from Walter O'Malley uh, to Horace Stoneham with the Giants to Phil Wrigley with the Cubs. Everyone he could, um, he could find to either get support or try to get their team. And he really found, I think, his first first two allies, one of them being Gene Autry, um, who was Texan and was also trying to get major league baseball at the time, and then Branch Rickey. It started with the Continental League and Branch Rickey starting, or with ownership starting New League, who were disgruntled about not being able to get into the baseball game. And it ended up in 1960 to be the first major um, advancement of adding franchises in at least 30 or 40 years. But you <laughs> had to go through the 60s to really uh, appreciate what happened, thanks to Mayor Tom Vandegrift, because in the 60s there was disappointment, anger, despair, because Dallas-Fort Worth could not get a major league team. Roy Hoffines, Gen Real Estate Baron R.E. Bob Smith, had led a successful drive to bring Major League Baseball to Houston. Here's Houston. They get the Colt 45s uh, in 1962, and uh, that killed us up here. How can Houston, Houston, Mosquitoville, get a Major League team and we don't have one? One of the main reasons is Judge Roy Hoffine, a big villain up here, he visited with Huffines and he envisioned us having a National League club and Huffines was not very receptive. He told him to stuff it, that there was going to be, we were going to have one Texas Major League ball club and that was going to be Houston. He could care less about a rivalry, a natural rivalry between the Dallas-Fort Worth area and Houston. He declared, Texas is my territory. Not just 
you know, below Huntsville or somewhere. He wanted all of Texas. And I, you know, I was shocked. I was a young sports writer at the Morning News. And I was shocked at how much power that Hoffines had. I mean, he was able to block it. He literally had an entire monopoly on the Southwest. So you bring in Arlington and Dallas-Fort Worth, and he wasn't about to have that. And so um, that was a, a big effort that he ended up single-handedly blocking Judge Roy Hoffines. And um, I don't think my grandfather ever made a trip down to Astroworld or the Astrodome ever again after that date. Arlington uh, lost out in that because we did not have a ready-made stadium built. Uh, and that was the reason, otherwise we would have been in part of the expansion. What was amazing about that, and it's fun to know, uh, came into that possession after my father had passed, unfortunately, was the drawings of the original stadium that would have been here, and it would have been the first dome stadium in America. It would not have been the Astrodome, it would have been in Arlington, Texas. The disappointment and the despair and the anger of the 60s, because the decade went on and on and on, Nobody was really saying that much about DFW except Tom Vandergrift. He was out there beating the drum. Never stopped beating the drum. <laughs>